Okay, we're going to talk about batteries in this video. Now, there's all kinds of laptop batteries, and most of the time, they're very specific to the brand that you buy. If you bought an HP, there's only one battery that could fit in there, and you either have to buy an HP or an HP clone. Now, there's not too many things that actually go wrong with batteries, so this is going to be a pretty short video. Let's start by talking about how you can tell if you need to replace a battery or not. Now one way to test this is to go into the power options mode in your computer and you can get to that in Windows through the control panel power options and then click on the battery tab and look at what's happening with the battery. It'll tell you if it's charging, if it's not charging or how much charge is in the battery. Now if the battery is not charging, let's try to rule out some other things first like it could be a bad power adapter, a bad AC adapter. So if somebody's using an AC adapter that didn't come with that computer, it might not be putting out enough amps or enough wattage to actually charge the battery, and I've seen Dells do this. For example, I've seen power adapters that appear to be correct for Dell computers, but they're a little small actually, and they don't put out the correct amperage. They put out too low of a current, and therefore, though the adapter powers on the Dell computer, it won't charge the battery, and usually you'll get an error message when you boot up with that using that power adapter on a Dell anyway. Now incidentally, you're going to see a lot of AC adapters rated according to wattage. Wattage is simply voltage times the current or amps. So that formula, V times I, gives you wattage. Let's go through an example here of how you can check if the power adapter is correct for the computer you're working on. We've got a compact laptop here that's not charging. The power adapter is plugged in and you can see by that lightning bolt it's not charging. Now here's the power adapter we're using. Take note of the second line down there where it says 19 volt screen, 4.74 amps max. Now ignore the line above it that says 16 volts. This is a universal power adapter from Kensington and a lot of the universal ones can put out multiple voltage but the switch on this one we have set for the 19 volts DC and 4.74 amps max. Now we know what this adapter puts out power wise. Now let's check to see what the correct power adapter is for this compact laptop. And I like to check this on eBay because in the eBay descriptions it usually tells you what the voltage and the amps are for the power adapter you're trying to buy. Okay, so just go to eBay and do a search for whatever the laptop model is, compact M2000 adapter. It's going to bring up a long list of results. And we're just going to pick the first one. It looks good. Now we're going to scroll down in this listing and take a look. And we see that this adapter puts out 18.5 volts, 3.5 amps. Okay, let's get a second opinion here. Just go to the next one down and see what voltage and amps this is putting out. And this one, again, is 18.5 volts, 3.5 amps, which equals 65 watts. You'll find if you multiply 18.5 times 3.5, you get 65 and that is that formula I showed you earlier. Now, the reason I checked two vendors is because in case one of them made a mistake and they, they weren't selling the right adapter for the right computer, um, that's why I just checked twice to make sure we're getting the right numbers here. And that's a pretty reliable way of finding out what kind of power adapter that a computer needs just by checking the eBay listings there. Now, there's one more thing about power adapters I just want to bring up real quick. The amps on an adapter that you buy that, like for example, that one put out 3.5 amps. Power adapters, you could buy one that puts out 100 amps. The amps can be higher than what is required. So that requires 3.5 amps. You could get one that has 6 amps. You could get a power adapter that has 7 amps. You could get one that has 20 amps. And that will still work with that computer. The thing you don't want to be the wrong number is the volts. You can't put a higher voltage power adapter on a computer that's not rated for it, you will fry it. So if you're trying to hook a 25 volt adapter up to a laptop that's supposed to take an 18 volt adapter, bad move, you probably will fry the motherboard. So the volt has to stay the same. If a computer needs 18.5 volts, then you need to get an AC adapter that puts out 18.5 volts. You don't want to mess with the volts. But you can go higher on the amps. Okay, now where were we? We were trying to see if the adapter that's being used with this compact computer has enough power and current to power the machine and charge the battery. Now, if you remember looking at the power adapter in an earlier shot, you could see that the voltage 
is 19 volts and that the amps are at 4.74. Now this computer only requires 3.5 amps, so 4.74 is higher than 3.5. This adapter does have the capability of powering this machine. Now I know what I said about volts and this power adapter says it puts out 19 volts and the computer only takes 18.5, but that's close enough that I'm going to let it slide and that shouldn't have a problem when it's 0.5 volt. That you're going to find out with most adapters, 18.5 or 19 are about the same. Now let's go over the situation where if your DC jack on the laptop is bad and is not making a connection to the motherboard, then it might look like the battery is bad as well because the battery is now not holding a charge or even taking a charge. Now this has happened a lot in my shop with my customers where their DC jack goes bad, they think their battery's gone bad because it's not taking a charge anymore. They go out and buy a new battery and then they decide to bring their computer in because of the battery's still not charging even with the new battery. That's because the DC jack is bad. You're going to probably run into this a lot where um, the battery's not charging because the DC jack is bad and until you fix that the battery's never going to charge. So how do you test if your DC jack is bad? It's simple. Plug in the AC adapter, take the battery out of the computer. If the computer doesn't power on, then you know you have a problem with the DC jack. If the computer does power on, you can throw the battery back in and see if it charges. If the battery's not charging at this point, it's pretty likely it's a bad battery. Now it can also be, but it's pretty unlikely, that the charging mechanism inside the computer, like on the motherboard, is bad. Now I've done a lot of laptop repairs and I've maybe seen that one time, so I think that's a very rare situation. So it's pretty safe to say right now that the battery is bad. Now let's go over some other reasons why a battery won't be charging. It could possibly be that the contacts between the battery and the motherboard are not making a connection. Maybe something uh, spilled in there or there's some some film covering the contacts and they're not making a clean connection. One thing you can do is take a toothbrush and just scrub in between the fins of the battery there and also scrub down the fins where the motherboard connection is. Make sure to use a dry toothbrush, preferably one that has not touched human teeth. Now I've also seen instances where there's just some some kind of flukiness that's happening with the computer where if you just take the battery out and you put it back in it might start charging maybe uh, there was a malfunction on the motherboard or, or some circuit and it wasn't actually taking a charge try simple things before you just determine that the battery is bad you know reboot the computer power the computer down power it back on take the battery out put it back in once or twice and see what happens just doing that may fix the problem Now if you've done all the above and you're fairly certain that the battery is bad, it's time to buy a new battery. So I'm going to do a walkthrough here of how I buy a battery for my customers or even for myself and the process that I use to do that. You guessed it, eBay. I loved using eBay to buy specialized parts for laptops and includes batteries, motherboards, screens and that kind of thing. And here's the process I use to buy batteries on eBay. We're at the home screen of eBay here, the first thing you do is just type in the model number of the computer. This is a Compaq M2000 and then the word battery. We'll probably get a lot of listings for that. And then a little later I'll show you a different way which might be better. It yielded 645 results. Now that's a lot. When I get that many results I actually like to sort it by price because that's too many to go through one by one so we might as well try to get the cheapest ones first. And I like to order from this country. I'm in the U.S., so I like, I like sellers that ship from the U.S. New Jersey is one state away from me, so that might be pretty good. Um, let's click on this and see uh, how good it is. It's a good price, $35.90. The seller has tons of feedback and a 99.3 feedback rating. I love eBay because of the feedback rating. It's something you can't find at a lot of other places. Some people are afraid and get the wrong idea about eBay, but I actually like eBay because of the feedback rating. Um, what some people aren't thinking with is n not a lot of websites have feedback ratings. So you can basically 
it's easier to get screwed somewhere else, I think, than to get screwed on eBay. Um, the only way you can really get in trouble is if maybe somebody overtook uh, Optimum Solution, as a username here, his account or something, and stole his account and then was trying to scam, but it doesn't really happen often. I buy on eBay all the time. Now, this is a battery for a couple of the models of the Compact Rosario, and m 2000s included in there, so we should be okay. Now, this is a, a fine battery from a third party. This is not HP. So if you want to stay on the cheap side, you could get a battery like this. If you want to maybe spend a little bit more but get a higher quality battery, I would actually look for a compact battery and, and made by compact. The way I do that is I search for the word genuine in front of uh, what I typed before, before my, on my search. And now we only get six, but we now have HP batteries. Now here's a compact uh, genuine battery M2000. See, the problem with genuine is a lot of times you're not going to find new, especially on the older models. The third party will sell you a new battery. This might be a used, so let's see what's going on with this one. And this is a compact battery. And let's see uh, if they tell us. Okay, it's great cosmetic condition, excellent working condition. Okay, so this is a used. Now, if you really want to get picky, and there's not enough listings for us to do this, but say we got another 600 listings typing the word genuine. If you really want to get to cr the cream of the crop, type new genuine before your search terms and type that. And we're probably going to get nothing out of that. But let's just see. Okay, well, these are some from China. Four results found for new genuine. Okay, this might actually be new. Is this the one we just looked at? Genuine compact battery. And let's see if it is new. Brand new, genuine HP battery. Let's see what the price is. 59 okay. So it's almost twice as much as the third-party no-name battery. But I would consider this. I would consider this. You want to get the brand-name battery. Let's check out the seller. Um, 3,600 feedbacks. 99.7% positive feedback rating. In my country and free shipping it's not a bad deal so there's your two options if you want to go cheap just look for the third party batteries if you want to get a more quality battery try to get an hp or a compact brain brand name battery that matches your computer now let's take a look at um the battery itself that we pulled out of this computer because there's another way to search for this battery and that's by the model number of the battery we search from the model number of the computer but this battery is actually I'm going to read the model number off now. It's HSTNN-DB17. Let's type and do a search for that and see what comes up. 135 results for that. And again, since there's that many results, let's sort by price. Okay, it's already sorted by price from last time. Here's a $35 battery. Okay, let's do genuine and see if any come up. Five results for genuine. Decent prices for a genuine, but they look like they're used. And if we type new genuine, again, we're probably going to get almost nothing. There's new genuine. There's only two. One's 52 and one's 78. So that's pretty much where you're going to be ending up. Usually, for almost any battery, you're going to find it. 35, 30 bucks will get you a third-party new one. And around between 60 and up to 90, you could get a new genuine one. It's all up to you. If you could swing the genuine one, I recommend the genuine one. If you need to just get by, then the third party one is fine. And that's how I do uh, battery shopping on eBay. This video actually turned out to be longer than I thought. But the last thing I want to talk about now is installing and removing batteries. You got your battery, you bought it on eBay or wherever you got it, got delivered, and now it's time to install it or take an old one out. Most laptops have a little slider on the bottom side of the case, usually with a little battery icon next to it. All you do is pull that lever and the battery comes right out. This is how you remove a battery on an older Dell. This old Toshiba has a simple slider, as well as this Sony Vio. Here's a few more with a simple slide switch. 
Compact Presario, HP DV6000. Now, some have a locking mechanism so the battery doesn't fall out. You're going to see an icon like that. And what you do is you unlock it first, then you hit the slider switch, pull it out, unlock, slide, and pull out. Here's another one. And another one with a locking mechanism. Not very complicated. Then to put it back in, just snaps right back in, no problems. And this one you kind of have to angle in. And there you have it for batteries.